YouTube, what's up? It's C Smith. Um, this video is basically a video about how I how I started DJing. You know why I started DJing. Um, uh, there's a comment left on my uh, on one of my videos I think yesterday asking this question. So I figured you know I make a video of it. You know whether it be interesting or not, it's up to you. But um, so I got started back in 2007. Um, my wife's sister was having a 30th birthday party. Um, she needed a DJ. I just so happened to have, at the time I thought it was a lot of music. I had about about 500 songs because uh, a group of guys, uh, myself and a group of guys, every uh, Friday and Saturday we play poker at my place, and so I, you know, have to entertain. So I had a, you know, couple couple songs and whatnot. So when uh, my wife brought brought me the dilemma her sister had, I'm like, hey, I got a lot of music. Again, 500 songs. I got a lot of music. You know, I can DJ a party. If she rents the equipment, you know, I burn some CDs and you know, I'll DJ a party. So she's like, okay, cool. It was a 70s theme party. Um, so uh, show up to the party with uh, two sandwich bags of CDs, you know, a total of about, about 10 CDs and sandwich bags. I thought that was cool, you know what I mean? I hadn't seen any other DJ transport gear before, never seen a gig log, you know, a day of my life. So I, I thought, you know, showing up with sandwich bags was, you know, was okay, it was, it was acceptable. Strike one. Um, so uh, the equipment she rented was one of those Newmark all-in-one systems. Um, one of the older, first, you know, all-in-one mixes that uh, Newmark made, the uh, silver one. Um, I had no idea on how to mix. Uh, my song selection was terrible because I assumed that everybody wanted to hear the newest of the new songs. You know what I mean? I knew it was a 70s party, so I you know, brought a couple CDs with 70s music. However, you know, I, I assumed everyone wanted to hear what was new. And another uh, thing I did wrong was playing what I wanted to hear only. You know, I was playing all the new stuff because that's what I wanted to hear, not necessarily what what they wanted to hear. And uh, my music wasn't, you know, wasn't uh, very culture friendly. You know, I just say I just say that. <laughs> um, so I j I jacked that party up something terrible, man. I I. I I, I jacked it up something terrible. But the thing was, people, her friends that were there, you know, they, they thought I was an actual DJ. And so a couple people say, hey, you know, you did a good job. So I'm thinking, you know, hey, I might be on to something. Uh, so after that, after that party, um, and we fl flew back to Japan, and I uh, applied for this DJ gig on base at this enlisted club. Um, it, took, it took them about like five or six months to respond. But uh, when I first, my first gig in, ended up being a Christmas party, and uh, they were paying me uh, twelve fifty an hour. And, you know, I actually thought that was you know decent money. Um, so I show up for my first gig, CDs in the sandwich bag again. Um, but I show up with like five CDs, five CDs, one CD with Christmas music, two CDs with rap, and then two CDs with R&B. Wrong. I mean, the, the total wrong selection of music for a Christmas party. I had no idea that, you know, a Christmas party was would consist of a lot of older people who actually wanted to, you know, wanted wanted to party. So the one uh CD I had with Christmas music on it, and we had like ten songs. And dinner lasted from like six to eight, somewhere around that. You know, there was like a social hour, then it was dinner for another hour. Anyway, so you, as you can imagine, that CD was basically done in 30 minutes so I had to recycle the same songs over and over again for two hours and people were getting upset about it you know I'm thinking yeah, it's just background Christmas Christmas music who's listening but people were actually listening and then my Christmas music was was soulful Christmas music you know I didn't have any uh, Mariah Carey well I guess that's, that's a little soulful but no uh you know Bing Crosby you know some uh more classic you know traditional Christmas music it was more you know uh, Songs that are redone by, you know, Boys to Men and uh, Johnny Gill, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, people were complaining about the Christmas music, the background music. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be a long night. But I'm like, yeah, but, you know, once, once this, uh, Christmas music is done, I throw in my dance music, I'm going to kill them. Wrong. I didn't have any old school music, no funk, you know, classic rock, nothing that people could 
you know, listen to and, you know, take them back to their childhood years or, you know, some, some, some good time in their life. You know what I mean? I had all new music, thinking that everyone wanted to hear new music. Um, the first song I played after dinner was, uh, I remember like it was yesterday, it was a Soldier Boy uh, Crank That. And, you know, that was a hit song at the time, so everybody enjoyed that song. Then after that, I played some new song by Alicia Keys, you know, Clear the Dance Floor. After that, I played another new song, and they just slowly started to file out. And I'm like, man, what's the problem? They don't like new music? This is This is new, you know. So I continue, you know, I'm playing newer and newer, thinking, okay, maybe maybe that wasn't new enough, you know, I'm playing newer and newer. So uh, finally this lady comes up to me, and she's like, you don't have any funk? And I'm like, funk? You know, why would I bring funk? No one wants to, nobody wants to hear that old school music. We came to party. And she's like, she's like shaking her head like, you don't have any funk? You don't have any this? You, know, you don't have any, uh, she's like naming artists, you know, Pink Floyd, you don't have any? I'm like, no, no, not not at all. Why, why would I need that? Um... So anyway, everybody had left by nine. The uh, Christmas party was supposed to last till midnight. So, so about th three hours, I was sitting there basically with pie in, the fa pie in my face because I didn't come prepared. Um, but I mean, I didn't. I really didn't know any better. I didn't. I didn't watch YouTube videos to see what DJs brought. Um, you know, I was just basically going off you know, instinct. All right, so I continued that gig uh, at the Enlisted Club. Um, for a few months, and uh, I eventually I end up buying that that same Newmark system that I used uh, at my sister-in-law's uh, birthday party. I bought that same system, and this is in 2007. And I'm thinking that you know, hey, this is it. You know, th this is the state-of-the-art equipment. Man, I, I couldn't. It could have been further from the truth. At this time, Serato was out. You know, Virtual DJ, Tractor, you know, all these other other programs, and I, I'm still. Uh, carrying uh, CDs in a, in a plastic bag, in a sandwich bag. And that Newmark system, I'd have a case for it or nothing. I'd just put it under my under my arm and, you know, I'd w walk into the, to the club, you know, with that and my, my, my plastic bag of CDs. However, you know, I did start bringing more music, older music, um, you know, after, you know, getting complaints and, you know, and learning from experience, you know, I started building, building my library slowly. Um, still didn't know how to mix. I couldn't mix music to, to save my life. I didn't understand beats per minute, you know, no type of transition. I would play a song from beginning to end, you know, and bring in the next one, you know, so on and so forth. Um, after uh, probably about a month of having that uh, Newmark system, I started uh, watching, stumbled upon some YouTube videos, um, you know, about DJ equipment. And I realized that, you know, mine was, you know, I guess kind of outdated, so I went on eBay uh, and I and I bought a used set of a uh, Denon DNS 1000s with the uh, Denon DNX 100 mixer, and I mean you couldn't tell me nothing once I got that, and then I started noticing in, the, in these uh, YouTube videos the guys were bringing their laptops, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder why they bring their laptop. I'm like, oh, that's because you know, they, what I'm thinking that they uh, they did like I did, they burned CDs from iTunes. And instead of, you know, having to print that playlist out, they just bring their computer to look right on iTunes, you know, like look at the playlist, or CD number five, the CD number five, it shows my playlist, and that's what they're doing. So I started bringing my laptop along, thinking that, you know, that's, that's what the deal was, until one guy asked me, he asked me, uh, what program are you running? And I'm like, what? What do you mean what program? I'm like, iTunes. He's like, so you're running iTunes? And I said, well, you know, I use it for this. And he kind of like shook his head like, you know, you're a DJ, and this, <laughs> this is what you do with your laptop when you should be running virtual DJ, Serato, or, you know, one of the other uh, DJ programs. So, um, after uh, I had the uh, that dinner system for about two weeks before I realized I got a shabby deal. Um, the mixer had a short in it, and it would, uh, it would go out in the middle, you know, of, of the gigs I was doing. And... I uh, ended up selling it back on eBay to somebody else. I, I didn't tell them, you know, they, they showed it out. So, you know, they got me. I got them too. Um, after that, um, we moved back to Michigan from Japan, and I ended up buying that same exact system, uh, brand new. And I bought that, and I bought two uh, Behringer, uh, I think they were called the 212B or 212D speakers. 
um, with the stands. Actually, it was one, a whole little package deal. The the the, the one thousands, the mixer with the case, the two uh, speakers and the stand. Um, but like fifteen hundred bucks, something like that. But anyway, so um, that was my first official mobile DJ system. Um, I started putting ads on uh, Craigslist, and you know, shortly after placing my first ad, I got a call for a gig. My first mobile DJ gig was terrible. I mean, terrible, terrible. It was in a church parking lot, but it was a uh, they were passing out school supplies, you know, for kids going back to school or whatnot, and they, you know, strictly asked for no no cussing. You know, no uh, sexually explicit material because, you know, it was on church ground. And, you know, I obliged. However, when you download music from, when you download it illegally from LimeWire, you know, it's kind of like a Cracker Jack box. You don't know if it's the clean version, the bad, you know, the, the dirty version, or if, it, if it's even that song. Um, so, another thing I learned you know, before I get to the music was... When you set up your speakers, I didn't realize when you stand behind your speakers, the volume is like at you know five percent of, of what the you know of what's actually being projected. So I'm outside I'm in the heat. I'm standing behind my speakers. I'm like, man, these speakers sound terrible. You know, I, I can barely hear them. So I'm cranking it up louder and louder. The green, yellow, and red lights on the mixer meant absolutely nothing to me you know <laughs> it should have it should have been common sense it meant nothing to me the red lights flash on the back of the speakers meant nothing to me I didn't red light should 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 be a you know a, a sign you know of bad things to come it meant nothing to me so I ended up clipping you know both the speakers they over overheated Within like 30 minutes of the gig, they overheated, mixer overheated. Um, I had to shut it down for like almost like an hour and a half. You know, just sitting there trying to wait for the equipment to cool back down. But I, I didn't know I was sitting there waiting for it to cool back down. I thought it, you know, it's faulty equipment. So I'm unplugging, I'm plugging it, I'm doing all, trying all these, you know, troubleshooting measures. Finally, the music comes back on, and when it does come back on, um, I play Lil Wayne, a Millie. If you hadn't heard the song, listen to the song. It's a terrible song to play on church grounds. <laughs> Needless to say, every deacon, you know, every nurse, assistant pastor, <laughs> you know, the usher board, whatever, they came complaining about the music. It was a four hour gig, and out of that four hours, I think I played a total of maybe ten songs. Because I continued to blast the blast the music, overheat the the equip the equipment, and it kept shutting down. I, I didn't realize why, but that was my first mobile DJ gig. After that, um, you know, I progressively started to watch more YouTube videos, try to learn that you know learn the mix, learn the beat match. Um, you know, finally got the got got the hang of it, and. Uh, I moved up to the Technique 1200s in the uh, Pioneer. Uh, I think it was the 450 mix. But I'm uh, I'm nowhere near where I wanna where I wanna be. Uh, you know, the finished product. But I don't want to make it to the point where I'm I'm no longer mobile. You know what I mean? Where on top of my truck I have to rent you know a U-Haul trailer. Eh, you know that's that's just a bit too much for me. Um, for example, that guy uh, Stewart's Production. I mean, he has an excellent, awesome. I mean, one of the best. Uh, light shows and setups I've seen, um, but uh, you know, it's, it's not like it's just too much sometimes. You know what I mean? When it takes you three, four hours to set up, you know, it's not really mobile. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, you know, a few more upgrades. I wanna, uh, I wanna do more uh, uplighting. Um, I think I wanna add uh, possibly two more of the. Uh, of the PRX 635s, and then two uh, two subs to the uh, PRX. I believe it's the 118. So, and I'll be good to go as far as sound. I mean, like forever. Um, as far as uh, lighting, 
probably want to add two more of the uh, two more of the uh, the intimidator spot one uh, fifties, and you know maybe one more uh, flat screen TV, and you know that'd be just my permanent setup. I don't really want to go much bigger than that because again, you know it it takes away from the you know the uh, the point of being a, a you know quick mobile uh, mobile setup. But yeah, so that's my story. What's yours?